Hey guys, Jonathan the PC Smith one Today we're going to be comparing 8GB of RAM versus 16GB of RAM. Is it really essential to have 16? A lot of gamers are saying that 8GB just isn't enough anymore. So let's find out if that's really the case. Let's take a look at the benchmarks. All nine games were benchmarked at 1920 by 1080 resolution, no VSync, and no motion blur. Also, keep in mind that Windows and any other applications that you have running will take up 1.5 to 2.3 gigabytes in and of themselves. The system I used to benchmark had an R9-390X, an i5-4670K overclocked to 4.2GHz, and the RAM was G-Skill Sniper 1600MHz cast latency 9. As you can see from the benchmarks, having 16 gigs of RAM did not significantly increase the performance. The games that were affected the most were Doom, Far Cry Primal, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, and The Division. To explain, let's use Doom as an example. The Foundry level is the most graphically intense level of the game. It can take up to 5.9 gigabytes of RAM in this level. Remember when I said at the start of this video that to run Windows and just one antivirus program together, it will take up 1.5 to 2.3 gigabytes of your total system RAM. So, if you have 8 gigs of RAM in your PC, then you actually only have 6 gigs of RAM left for gaming. Hence the reason why Doom increased in performance having 16 gigs of RAM more than a game like Crisis 3. Welcome to the Jungle is the most graphically demanding level in Crisis 3, but it only takes up 3.9 gigabytes of RAM, which reflects in the performance not increasing much having 16 gigs of RAM. The max FPS increase was 5%, the average increase was 5%, and the minimum was 6%, which those numbers fall into a wide margin of error, concluding that it's not a very significant increase. Doom, on the other hand, with 16 gigs of RAM, increased the max FPS by 10%, the average by 8%, and the minimum by 10%. Is that a huge increase? No, but it's significant enough to take into account. Moving on to Far Cry Primal, Deep Wounds mission area is one of the most graphically demanding areas of the game, and with 16 gigs of RAM, it increased by 10% across the board. Now, Far Cry Primal is a bit of an anomaly because it only uses 5.2 gigabytes of RAM, while Star Wars Battlefront uses 5.4 gigabytes of RAM, but only increased by performance in 6% in the maximum, 5% in the average, and 8% in the minimum, having 16 gigs of RAM. Mirror's Edge Catalyst uses a whopping 6.8 gigabytes of RAM, so it definitely took advantage of having the extra RAM, increasing the maximum FPS to 11%, the average by 10%, and the minimum by 10%. Batman Arkham Knight uses 5.1 gigabytes of RAM and didn't really change for the maximum FPS because Arkham Knight is capped at 90 FPS. However, the average went up by 5%, but that falls into a large margin of error, and the minimum went up significantly by 12%. The Division utilizes 6.1 gigs of RAM, so by having 16 gigs of RAM, the performance increased the maximum FPS by 11%, the average by 11%, and the minimum by 9%. Rise of the Tomb Raider takes up about 5 gigs of RAM, so it didn't really improve a whole lot having more RAM. I benchmarked on the two most intense areas, the Soviet installation and the geothermal valley. The max FPS increased by 7%, the average by 7%, and the minimum by 10%. Last but not least, The Witcher 3 uses about 5.4 gigabytes of RAM, the max FPS increased by 6%, the average also by 6%, and the minimum by 10%. The final verdict for having 16 gigs of RAM is that it is not essential whatsoever. However, while having 16 gigs of RAM might not increase your average FPS by a whole lot, it will almost always increase your minimum FPS by 8 to 12 percent, making your games less choppy by reducing FPS drops. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please hit the like button and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And you can check out some of my other videos: the best-looking PC games of the 1990s on the left, and a ridiculously goofy rap battle on the right. See you guys in the next PC Smith One video.